I'm sure you've never considered adding a coloring book to your bedroom repertoire, but Love and Lust is the adult adult coloring book full of sensual imagery sure to get things heated up. I'm Jessica Van, and I help individuals and couples to enhance their sexual experiences through learning to prioritize their pleasure. I'm a licensed therapist, and I developed this coloring book as a way to eliminate the shame sometimes associated with sex and increase healthy conversations about true intimacy. Love and Lust is accompanied by the Essential Love and Lust Toolbox, which is online and offers therapeutic exercises sure to spice up things in and out of the bedroom. Head over to EnvisionCounselingLLC.com and get your Love & Lust Toolkit today. From my experienced podcast listeners, get 25% off when you use promo code FME. Get your copy of Love & Lust today and add a little color to your sexy. Here, what is going on, everybody? This is your host, Rob, back with another episode of From My Experience Podcast. Y'all already know how I do. I want to thank all of our listeners and followers, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I don't use the Twitter, so don't follow me there. I'm just kidding. Follow me there. Maybe I'll add some more content. Shout out to all of y'all. Hope y'all are having a great day, whether this is morning, noon, or night. Hope you are enjoying it. Hopefully COVID-19 has not cost you your relationship or your money or your health or your sanity like it's cost many other people because things is crazy out here in the streets. I am on fire today. I've been walking four miles a day for the last three weeks. I done lost weight. I got a haircut. I'm cooking right. I'm eating right. I'm feeling right. And things are going extremely well. How you like that? for an intro today i have a very unprofessional interview for you this person i know <laughs> <him> since... <laughs> why you laugh yo i had to say what and I'm unprofessional. <laughs> oh, I know. <don't>, <laughs> no, not not you. The interview. The way I'm about to do this interview is unprofessional. Oh, not, you're, you are unprofessional a little bit. Um, so we go back. We met back in my record label days. Those of you who know me know me know I had a record label back in the day or was part of a record label. Excuse me. Um, and she rapped. And we have a lot of great memories together. We have a lot of weird, interesting memories together. And we have a lot of, really, bro? You gonna do that? Memories together. But she's always been cool, down to earth. She's becoming more level-headed, like me. And now, <laughs> now a, a ton of time has passed. Seems like a lifetime has passed. And we're about to catch up. We actually did an Instagram Live about, what was that, last week, I think? We did a random yeah, About a week or two. Yeah, two weeks, ago. Dang, two weeks ago. Jeez, I'm getting old. I don't even remember. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the artist, one of the hardest working women that I know, the hustler, the always on the go, always on the move. I'm trying to get something done, moving my life forward. I call her Fave, or you can call her Favor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. What's going on? All right. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. I'm still cool people, though. You're um, awesome, man. You're awesome. How have you been? I have been nothing short of amazing, um, spiraling in certain situations, what? but staying afloat all the way through somehow. Uh, you know, that's, I guess that's what I could say if I had to say anything of that nature. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's a. Uh, I can know. I can honestly say I have been great. Um, been more focused, especially with COVID happening, yo. Like, yeah. I I don't know whether COVID was supposed to unlock a whole bunch of people's minds and make you tap into who you're supposed to be or your purpose or whatever. But I'm not gonna flex. I cannot lie. Like, I have I have truly been digging in deep on things that I said I wanted to do years ago. So yeah. 
Same. It's one of the things I've been, uh, I don't want to, <laughs> I'm watching this show, uh, Green Leaf and it's about pastors. And I'm about to say I've been preaching lately, but I, yeah, I can, <laughs> I've been preaching lately to people about that. I'm like, yo, those of you like me who are blessed enough to still have their income secure and just this extra time on your hands. If you don't level up or step up some aspect of your life, you're going to regret it because times like this don't happen. Like they just, it doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? So I'm thankful and I'm glad that I was able to take some advantage. Um, and the podcast being one, I'm trying to do a lot of things with the podcast, but this ain't about me. So tell the people a little bit about your passions and what you're up to these days. Oh man. Yo, that's, like you said, like I'm a hustler. Um, I do my best to try to utilize all my gifts and my talents. So, like, first off, I'm a songwriter. I'm part of an organization called Songwriters. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Writing Sessions America. Um, it's a what? songwriting organization. Or what you say? Say what? Really? I didn't know this. Go ahead, yo. Yeah. So yeah, I'm part of a. Uh, it's called Writing Sessions of America. It's uh, ran by our uh, organization, uh, organization leader and my mentor, uh, Kevin Shine. Um, amazing guy, very intelligent in the music business as well as great with relationships and great on like teaching people. So like I've been what I've been in that organization about a year and a half now. Um, literally just been writing. I don't want to live. I say about a year and a couple months. But uh, literally just writing songs, cataloging, cataloging. I've been performing um, a lot in Atlanta. I live in Atlanta now. So um, that's where I met him at. So, you know, this is where I've been doing a lot of my stuff at. Um, also, besides that, I do engineers. So I've been tapping more into that as well um, with the music, you know, television. I mean, well, film and stuff like that. Well, oh, yeah, film too. So I've been filming a lot lately. That's crazily something that I picked up on my own um, when I was in Afghanistan as a contractor. I was uh, teaching myself through theory and then came home and started doing it hands on. But like now, we, uh, me and my friend, we have our own production company called Creating Your Own Dream Films. Um, underneath that, we have created a web series called Choices with Two Eyes. It's an LGBT web series. But we have like viewers from all spectrums and walks of life because the storylines or the characters are so relatable to just what's going on in daily life that you don't really too much focus on the preference more than the story so Mm -hmm. um we got that we also got and then with us being you know we're we're lgbt affiliated but we are writers and a, a filmer that that likes to expand our minds and do more than just what's in our current state i guess our current state of mind which would be you know the lgbt community so like we got a um a short film called that we're still wait say that again you broke up a little bit you have a short film called what oh shots okay yeah so shots is a um it's a perspective short film that allows you to you know choose who's right or wrong in it there's it's, it's to create a conversation basically when it comes to uh police brutality and when it comes to the and um the us as people playing trying to play victim but yet we antagonize certain situations which put us where we are sometimes not all the time but sometimes so um it's just you know just shedding light and creating conversation and things like that um outside of that i've been blessed to work with my um my friends from full sale i went to full sale um for audio engineering so when I moved to Atlanta, my homeboy, uh, Malik, uh, Russell, he owns 730 Vision. So I've been able to work on a lot of major um, music video sets like Tiana Taylor worked at Pussy. Excuse my language, but I, I think we on a free air program. Yes, you are. Um, okay, cool. Like Rich Homie Crom, I've been able to work with him, Young Dolph and Ock Obama. Uh, Barack I've been Obama? To work... Ock Obama. Oh. Ock. Ock Obama. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, and other independent artists that have been doing things. Um, Donna Lee from South Carolina, I've been able to work with him. Um, it's, you know, just been doing a lot of stuff. So, and then, like you said, I'm always doing something. I just really started focusing heavy on my cleaning business. So, go green cleaners. That's what I do now for my nine to five when I'm not doing all that other stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, that's basically about it in a nutshell. What aren't you doing? <laughs> um, I ain't sleep. 
I ain't sleeping. You know what? Some other lady had asked me that. She was like, oh, my financial coach. We were talking uh, day before yesterday. You have a financial like, coach? Yeah. I had to get my life together, man. Like, yo. No, like, yo, for anybody listening to this stuff, like, I'm a young black female. Okay, number one. Um, I've done 14 years. Oh, that's the other thing. I've done 14 years in the Army Reserves. Um, I've deployed twice, so I'm a disabled veteran in a whole nine. And I can honestly say that in my 20s, I touched money that I don't think other 20-year-olds of color would have touched. I, I can't even sit here and flex. I can honestly say I probably, in my 20s, I probably ran through a good 20, 250K. What? Yeah. Blowing money, bro. That's like going to school, getting getting money back from school. That's contracting overseas. I made a hundred hundred and six thousand dollars just going overseas. Okay, hold on, yo, you're giving too much. Hold on, I you, no, are oh. your taxes straight? Yeah, my taxes. Okay, straight. you can talk about that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that. that was like that was years ago. That was years ago. Ooh, wow. But yeah, if you ever want, if you ever want to contract overseas, yo, like be intelligent about what you're doing. But the thing that's what I, it was. I was I I was a kid with money. Yeah, and so I didn't. I didn't know about. I mean, I knew. Don't get me wrong. I knew about real estate. I knew about investing. I, I knew about all this stuff, but it wasn't my concern. I went over there for ignorant choice. Um, even though I came out with a great benefit, but I went over there for ignorant choice. And when I came back home, my focus was just finishing school. So that's all I really did. And I played with all my a major. I paid a lot of stuff off. Now, don't get me wrong, but. The access money that I had, the excess money I had, yeah, I I played, bro. I can't even play it. I, I can't even play it. So, yeah, I had to get a financial coach. So, I was like, yeah, I can't live the rest of my life like this. Well, I'm glad you got a financial coach. Um, and I'm glad your life journey is very uh, different now. I know when we used to talk, everything was always in shambles. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to yes. say it like that, but you were always in shambles because you were. <laughs> God dang it! I almost said the e word. You were all. You're always going through matters of the. Heart. I'm trying not to add to this whole. You know the word that Jada used when she was talking to Smith. Will I don't. Yeah, want to, I'm, yeah. try, I'm trying to avoid it. Uh, you. <laughs> I really am because I know everyone's was, gonna be joking was, on it. I was in a lot of situationships. That's what I would say. Yes, you were in a lot of situationships. So yeah. let's take it back to the to the original roots of this podcast. Things have transformed and upgraded since. But we talked about relationships a lot on here. We used to have a different name and all kind of stuff, y'all. Uh, those videos mm -hmm. are actually on YouTube. If y'all want to call uh, see him? It's called She Said He Said. Um, but what? What what are some of the lessons that you've learned from some of these situations? Um, yeah, you got me thinking about the last one you told me about when we were living Ooh, together. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that chick was crazy. Boy. She was... Dang, you know what? Oh, man. Like, oh, yeah, she was something special. But, um, but I was special as well. I was, like, specially retarded. Um, don't don't call don't use that word. Go ahead, yo. Oh, <laughs> politically my, my incorrect. Apologies. Politically incorrect. I was I was not thinking straight when I was when I was pursuing her. Um, but no, nah, like the, I learned a lot, yo. Like I've learned a lot. And to be real, to be very honest, I've only been in six serious relationships, like committed relationships. That's a lot. Um, and that's a lot. And I'm 32, so that's a lot in a short time span. That um, is. When did you start dating? Dating like when did the first one happen? How old were you? Think my first, my first relationship was my first real relationship was with a guy. Actually, what? Um, my yeah, man, my sophomore year in high school, I had a boyfriend. Show did. Um, yeah. I can't even imagine it. I can't imagine. It. <laughs> I can't. I mean, I think we all. I mean, not all females that are, you know, of my preference. I don't think we all tried it, but I was one of them cats that was like, look, I'm not going to be out here, you know what I'm saying, false flagging, saying that I'm something that I'm not. Right. So let me let me figure it out. But, um, but yeah, I had a boyfriend, and I had him, to, what, I had my boyfriend up to my junior year, and then from there, I told him, I had like, I thought I liked her, and I don't think we can date anymore, you know what I'm saying? And then from there, like, 
we stay cool. We play 2K. We okay. used to play 2K online together. He went what? He went into the Air Force. I went into the Army. Um, we're still cool to this day. He finna get married. I wish I got invited to the wig, but it's cool. Um, uh, <laughs> my pop up anyway. Uh, but nah, but like with him dating him, like yeah, I started back in high school, but I started dating females. I say about my junior senior year, and my first very serious relationship with a female. And even though I can, I it was in high school. I would still say yeah, like yeah, about my my senior year. Mm. So. So like from that till now, bro. Oh man, I learned that it's a lot of stuff, a lot of situations I put myself in that I wasn't ready for. Right. I did. I did a lot of premature uh, relationships. I didn't date. Like I yeah. went from liking you to we together, player. Yeah. Um, and- <laughs> Yeah, you skipped the whole, I need to, you were getting to know people in the relationship, which is not good. At all, bro. At all. And then, like, when people actually showed me who they were, I was like, no, we can make you a better person. We can mm-hmm. do it together. Save them. And, like, that you sound was, like me. Yeah. I was out here trying to save them hoes. Yep. But, um, can, can, I, can I say that? Can I say that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Sable Ho. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you can use that the, word. The, the vocabulary. Yeah. I was, a, I, I was, I can relate to you on that. Um, but I've learned, especially now, um, you can't like I've I learned after my first, you know, my first serious relationship. That was my first serious relationship. You know that one. Uh, for real? Um, yeah, that was my first serious relationship. Cause I went to high school in Philadelphia, so I left to come to South Carolina for college. So I ain't had nothing back there. But uh, true, true. yeah, that's one of those things when people are hurt. I've learned to recognize when people are hurt and they need fixing. You know, mm-hmm. you can't like. Oh, God dang it! I was trying not to do this. Like Will and Jada, uh, she was hurt and she needed some fixing, and you can't depend on somebody else for your happiness. Mm-hmm. You can't, you know what I'm saying? And I tried to be that happy place for people, and it just, it never worked. So yeah, I definitely feel where you're coming from. So what what are some of the more valuable lessons that you have learned? I've, I've learned to consciously date, um, to be more upfront about my standards and what I want instead of just being willing to accept um, what a person's giving me. Um, right. from jump. Now, I understand you got to get to know people, so you got to give them room, but you got to be, uh, you know, upfront about what your intentions are. You know, what are you looking towards? Like, I want to know, like, my first question, no flags. And uh, it throws a lot of girls off. I used to be on POF. I got off. Um, mm-hmm. And when chicks would hit me up, they'd be like, hey, how are you? Or I think you're cute. I'd be like, hey, is it cool if I ask you a random question? And they'd be like, yeah, go ahead and ask me. And I'd be like, do you love yourself? <laughs> we talked like, about this. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, like, I don't care about what's your favorite color. If you got a job, I don't care about none of that right you, now. If you got a I job, need know, <laughs> I need to know that. That might be my number now, one question. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Go ahead. I'm going to say, yeah, because I can't. If you love you, then you care about you and your needs. That's what I'm saying. True. So, yeah, do you love you? That's uh, that is now my first question, and I'm realizing that. And like, also a big thing that I learned is that I would hop in relationship after relationship, but never took time off. Right? Yeah, so I told you about I, that. Yeah, I thought it took a marriage. It took a marriage to learn. Y'all heard um, that? Y'all heard right? <laughs> yeah. It's just crazy, but like I didn't take the time to detox past relationships, and so I started seeing like pieces of of what really isn't me um, come up in my marriage, in my relationships, from past stuff like my insecurities. Like I'm not. Don't get me wrong. I feel everybody has some sense of insecurity, True. but when there are areas that you're confident in before you get with people. And then after a time period, if they're already insecure, that's a transfer of spirits because sex is the one of the highest transfers of energy. 
So, and that's a, it's also a transfer of spirits. So, like, when you're doing that, like, you're taking on every person that they never detox themselves from. Mm -hmm. So, like, bro, like, and then I learned, like, I'm doing this tantric stuff now. So, I'm doing a little tantric work in my life. And, um, and learning that just like anything else, it takes in a, in a committed relationship or even almost even in a one night stand, according to how strong of a cord it was during that sexual experience, you, it takes seven years to get that person's energy up off of you. Seven. You know what I'm saying? If, if you don't, if you don't do now, this is just what I've been reading and researching player. So don't, don't, um, this ain't on me. But, like, if you don't do the whole detox cleansing of ritual, you know, it, it is a meditation-type ritual. But if you don't do things like that to disconnect yourself from those energies, taking your higher self with their higher self and saying, hey, look, I give all that you gave to me back to you, all that energy, all that bad juju stuff you had going on, take that back, give me all me back, you go on with your life. You know what I'm saying? You be happy where you are. Because higher selves can connect us as people, regular people with our emotions and all that crap. We can't communicate and connect, but our spirit mans know how to connect. And so if once you disconnect your spirit man, you feel free, bro. Like straight up. So I learned that. Detox. 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 Take time for yourself. Date you. Date you. Date you. Date you. And if you and if there are things that you want in a relationship that you cannot provide for yourself, bro then that that's not a part of your standard right now. You might need to check your check your standards or you need to check yourself. Oh, I love that. I love that. If you can't do it for yourself, why I need to do it for you? Mm. Bruh. Mm. I mean, <laughs> that's just straight up. You just man. struck a chord with some some listeners, I'm sure. Or <laughs> or someone that they know. They know we all know somebody like that, man. Um yeah. that is a very good point. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I need to write that down. Shit. Oh my god! Yeah, man, relationships can be so toxic and so consuming. It's just nuts. It's nuts. But I'm just glad that you found your way. Like you've all, you've never stopped working that I know of. You're always hustling, doing something, and always moving forward. And I think that's really important. Um, I like the message that you had. We're on Instagram Live. I should have kept that video. Oh, I might be on my phone actually. <laughs> It might be on my phone. So, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I know it's not on Instagram because we were saying some crazy shit. But uh, what? <laughs> yeah, that didn't need to be out there. Uh, it's probably <laughs> in the Facebook server somewhere. But um, so what do you? I ain't gonna keep you long. Um, I just wanted to holler at you because this is overdue. Um, no, I'm hungry too. Ain't nobody talking to you all day. Uh, oh damn. <laughs> you hungry too? Ain't you parked at Moe's? Yeah, but like I like to talk, so like. I'll, I'll pass up a meal to talk, especially to my homies. About some real stuff, oh, I'm on it. I'm oh, no, nah, I'm not it, passing so. that up. Um, okay, cool, cool. <laughs> no, I wish so. I could order online so I could just sit here and be like, can you just bring a curbside? <laughs> <laughs> no, so this is what I was going to ask you. So I don't want to put all your business out there, but I remember what we talked about on um, Instagram. So what is... What do, what do you see for your future right now? I know you're in a space of you're still cleansing and yeah. a place of growth and maturity. And you said you got off that dating app. So yeah. what is your focus now? Man, yo, my focus now is like self-love. Because, like, that's the one thing that, like, in all these years of dating, the one thing that I didn't do to myself, the way I loved all these other women, the way I loved all these other men, like, I did not treat myself like that. Mm -hmm. And I want to know what that feels like. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, a lot of chicks will tell you, like, oh, my God, like, to be, to be loved by you is amazing. Or, you know, it just feels good and whoop whoop. And I'm like, well, dang, like, why I can't feel nothing like that? You know what I'm saying? Like, I want that same thing. It's like, if my love is so amazing, then maybe I need to start loving myself first. Because I'm missing out on what everybody keeps saying is so amazing about me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, now that's my focus. My focus is, and, like, I'm, I had to check myself with that. I have very high standards. My woman got to do this. My chick got to be like this. And... Half that stuff I wasn't even doing. 
So mm. now I'm sitting back and it's just like, well, all right, Kim, you want a woman with a business, rest of your business. You know what I'm saying? You you want a woman that right. takes time for herself, take time for yourself. You know, you want a woman that 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 uh brings integrity to the table that's honest, you're gonna have to do the same thing. You want somebody that's gonna be vulnerable with you, you're gonna have to learn how to be vulnerable. Like it's there's just so many things that I started realizing, like, cause I'm separated right now. You know, me and my wife, we were married, we we're about to get a divorce. I'm not I'm not ashamed of saying it because I learned a lot in that marriage by a You know what I'm saying? So like now knowing all that I know out of that, it's just like I just I have a need of of loving me, bro. Like, yeah. And then I feel like that right there is just gonna attract, you know, who's supposed to be there. And like I won't have to save a hoe. I don't have to build a broad. You know, Wait, build a broad. <laughs> <laughs> I have not heard <laughs> that one. <laughs> oh. I ain't got to do none of that because, you know, she she's already, I've done the work, she's done the work, and and now we can work together to build a legacy. You know what I'm saying? And, like, that's that's always been my intent is I want to be with someone, you know, and I can be oh, very open and honest on air, dog. Like, at one point in time, I used to be like, oh, shit, man or woman, dog, whoever I fall in love, it is what it is. Mm. Now I really know what I want. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, now I'm more focused in now. And it's just like, hey, well, uh, yeah, this is, yeah, this is what I want. This is the type of person that I want to be with. So now I have to be that person. And yeah, that's where I'm at. You know, you so just brought booming. up. No, you, um, go ahead. So, but yeah, so like, like having my business booming. You know, writing songs for more major artists, even independent artists to break into the um break into the game. Um, even getting my, my songs or my music into a uh, TV film jingles or whatever, like that's that's the goal now. That's where that's where I'm at. What you're doing is something that I started doing about actually around the time I was your age. Maybe a little sooner, mm -hmm. maybe a little after. I had to realize what I wanted and who was most important, which is yourself. Because if you're not happy, you can't make yeah. anyone else happy. You have to go after those things. And I found myself attaching myself to other people's hopes and dreams and what they wanted and what I could bring to their life. And I wasn't looking at what they were bringing into my life and what I was bringing into my own life. And it wasn't very much. So I had to pull back and say, all right, what do I love? What do I want to do? That's when DJing really started popping. I had over three thousand dollars worth of dj equipment collecting dust you know mm -hmm. then i got back into yeah. djing then the podcast started getting better then i did more with my gaming and i'm like all right i need to keep this like a relationship should help you enhance what you are already doing it shouldn't take away exactly. from it or it should transform into something bigger and better that's how i feel about it but I'm definitely glad truth. you you sound like you've gotten some great healing. You're not moping around. You're smiling. I, that oh, makes me don't happy. Me wrong. Oh, shit. I ain't gonna sit here and fake the <laughs> no, bro. Nobody can fake the funk, bro. Like in a time of no divorce is not fun. No, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Even even you know you know regular relationships. Just I mean I hate to say regular relationships, but relationships that don't involve marriage, like. Even those having rocky moments and those are not fun. So it's not it's not easy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. Like every day ain't a high day. You know what I'm saying? Right. Some days it's a it's a boy, I gotta call a friend cause bro, I don't know what I'm gonna do right now. Or sometimes there's a I gotta shut my door and I got to go to God cause bro, like we got to talk or it may be something that I see, it may be a text I catch from Shotty and not knowing how to control your emotions in an emotional situation like this. Yeah. Um, it's it's a roller coaster. So like, yeah, like, bro, like, I ain't gonna flex my friends to tell you from it from when we separated in January to where I am now. It's like a whole two seventy right now. To be real, real, to be real, mm -hmm. like that's just where I'm at, and and I'm happy to be there. But when I finally get there, when I get all the way there, dog, like this, even this. This type of talk gonna be like on a thousand. You gonna be like, oh my god, like you yeah. we was just. You just talking about stuff like the little minimal stuff, but like, yeah, like, yeah. Well, I'm, it's, it's I'm not proud easy, of you. but it's, it's 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 being done. 
that's the thing, man. A lot of people don't get to where you are. They stay stuck in it because they're scared to branch out on their own and do the work to heal and get better and move on to something better. And I'm glad that you have taken the time to do that, which is why you're all right with me. So, <laughs> with that, I'm going to let you go. Um, this well, is a part it. one. We're definitely going to have a part two. Tell them where they can find you, where they can follow you. What's up? Alright, so check me out. You can follow me on all my social media at Fava F A V A underscore U R underscore F A V. Fava your fave. Um, check out my music. Check out what we always got on. Uh, got going on. I keep motivational posts up there. Check me out on Twitter. I'm on there. I'm on Facebook as well. All the same name. Got new good stuff coming out. So just keep up with me, man. Oh, yeah. All that will be in the description as well. And y'all already know FME underscore podcast on Instagram from my experience podcast on Facebook. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, tell a friend. We love y'all. Take care of yourself mentally, physically, financially. You have any questions or you want to suggest a guest or if you have any follow up questions for our guests, FME podcast one at gmail dot com. And we will catch y'all next time. Peace. Hey, I forgot something, bro. What? I forgot. I forgot. Don't hang up. Don't hang up, bro. What? Hey, look. I also, I also got my T-shirt line. If y'all want to order a T-shirt, it's called "Damn." Delete me all mental negativity. All right. Check that out. He gonna put that up too. Is I'm definitely gonna put there? that up. Yeah. So I, I'll send you a shirt too. I got you. I need your um your address. Oh yeah, definitely. All right. <laughs> I'll holler at y'all. All right. Peace out. Peace. <laughs>